Today, we have a conference, a really interesting conference titled Updated Understanding of, Light, of Linus Light uh, Kinetics Along the Thompson River Valley Using Satellite in Search. So this conference is going to be about you hazards. So you hazards treating human well-being. Line slices are a common you hazard in both natural and anthropogenic fissures around the world and adversely affects infrastructure, water courses, ecological habitats, and may result in loss of life. Trans uh, transportation corridors along valleys are the most vulnerable areas of land slices occurrences. The Thompson River Valley, south of Ashcombe in BC, is one of the most important transportation corridors in Canada. This corridor hosts several uh, land slices along the valley. Monitoring these land slices can reduce land slice risks by alerting personnel and land slice a acceleration in several in in this area improvement in remote sensing helps geotechnical engineers monitoring massive aerial extensions using satellite radar red radar interferometry insert this technology aims in observation of turbine movements in near real time with millimetric occurrence and revising times of less than a week the area coverage of IMSAR data and having different sensors monitoring the same location from different angles provide an opportunity to better understand three-dimensional group surface displacement, provided enhanced kinetic interpretation of line slides. So in this conference, an update interpretation of line slides kinetic along the Robert, uh, Robertson River Valley is presented. INSAR data was gathered from, this, from the Sentinel-1 satellite constellation and true ground displacement vector were estimated through geometric combination of line of signs over two years and general assumption of the expected kinetic of land slides in this project. So for this project, our speaker is Mr. Amit Sultanier. He received his master in geotechnical engineering from the IQIU University in Iraq in 2009 and has more than 10 years of experience as a geotechnical engineer and project manager. He began his master program in geotechnical engineering at the University of Alberta in, November, in September 2020 and has been focused his research on expanding the understanding of land slides uh, kinetic in the Thompson River Valley based on insert data. He successfully defends his thesis in September 2020. So please join me in us in welcoming Mr. Amir. Okay. Hi everyone, and thanks for attending this seminar today. Oh, the topic of my uh, seminar is understanding, uh, updated understanding of landslides kinematic along the Thompson River Valley uh, using INSAR data. And uh, it was, it was uh, a part of my thesis project under supervision of Dr. Mashiota here in New Alberta. Geohazards threaten human well being and affect animals' habitat and also. Uh, it has some damage on infrastructures. So landslide is a type of uh, geohazard that occurs all around the world every day. And the, uh, monitoring these events is one of the most uh, effective uh, method to have uh, early warning about this uh, phenomenon in nature. Landslides can threaten human lives, also have lots of economical uh, effects for the area which hosts this event. It also can damage infrastructures and affect human well-being. In this research, I have used INSAR, along, uh, INSAR data to monitor massive landslides along Thompson River Valley, uh, which can help to enhance understanding any possible uh, activity of them to have better risk mitigation or even uh, a stabilizing plan or early warning to uh, reduce the risk of landslide. Rivers always incise the ground 
uh, surface and water stream use the right path to spend the minimum energy. The created traces are always rich for agricultural purposes and people like to live on them usually. The river pass is favorable to build the transportation routes due to energy efficiency and stream erosions create shallow to deep slope, which has potential of landslide along the valleys. Okay, Thompson River Valley, south of the town of Ashgrove, uh, which has the uh, which has uh, several landslides in this area, and uh, it is the uh, area of my research. Uh, the landslide in this area has sizes between uh, 750,000 cubic meters to 15 million cubic meters, and the uh, height of this landslide is uh, between uh, 75 to 125 meters with uh, angles between um, 15 to 30 degrees. This valley is traversed by CPR and CNR, which make it uh, more important for transportation system of Canada. INSAR stands for intro sorry, <laughs> interferometric synthetic aperture radar. In this method, satellites carry a radar which can send electromagnetic waves to uh, objects on the Earth and receive reflection of the sent waves from those objects. It can be done by radar even in heavy weather and the darkness. So it is a useful method for monitoring the ground data, the ground and track its displacement at different times. Uh, the orbiting satellite constantly emits electromagnetic waves to the ground, which illuminate a footprint on the ground. Objects on the ground observe and uh, scatter some of a wave and reflect the rest of energy. The next time the satellite is passing the same point, it gets a second backscatter accession. And like any other waves, these waves have also an amplitude and phase. And amplitude, the amplitude component somehow resemble the aerial photographs, but phase component consists of speckles. Using subtraction of phases of two different backscattered waves received by satellite can be transformed to displacement after steps of processing data for removing noises and unfavorable layers. In this project, I have used the process data by TRI Altamira Group to monitor the ground movement in the area of my research. Oh, different items play a role in creating an infogram, such as topography. Atmosphere is also made up of ionized particles, uh, which interfere with satellite waves and cause some delays. Also, satellites do not capture SAR images at the exact same locations, and that it, it can uh, impact the results. Moreover, some random objects are arbitrarily distributed on the ground and each has a specific reflectivity properties. And even if we can manage uh, to deal with all this uh, stuff, the waves still are wrapped in uh, the range of minus p pi to plus pi and we need to unwrap them to use. Uh, and when all these items are addressed, we will have the displacement However, this displacement is not the actual displacement, but only part of it. And INSAR yields only the displacement projected on the satellite line of sight or LOS. And the accuracy of this method is uh, in centimeter scale. The topographic uh, noises can be removed using digital elevation model or DM map. Uh, this process is called DINSAR and it is it still can identify distances in centimeter scale. The atmospheric noises also can be removed by a process which is named as PSINSAR, which can increase the accuracy of the method to millimeter scale. This method is only applicable for permanent scatterers such as man-made buildings, uh, but TRE Altamira uh, developed a specific process which they called it SQUISAR, which can process data for distributed scatterers to increase the data density. As this method increase, uh, no, sorry, as, as this method incorporates PSINSAR, so there is no missing data for any possible permanent scatterers. 
the used data in this research was processed by a squeeze star method. So the accuracy of the result is in millimeter scale. Uh, like any other methods, INSAR has its own strengths, which include accuracy, almost real-time monitoring. It is effective for large and remote areas. It does not need light and uh, also can penetrate clothes and snow. This method is, uh, still has some limitations, like its resolution. It is affect, affected by some noises and the limited revisiting time make it uh, inapplicable for rapid landslide events. Okay, in this project, I have developed a method to find the real ground displacement vectors using LOS uh, changes of both Sentinel-1 ascending and descending orbits data, and then I've applied it for Ripley landslide. After this step, I have evaluated the method's accuracy using the GPS existed data for the same area. Uh, at the next step, I applied the evaluated method to measure the other landslides movement along the valley. And finally, I have updated the landslide kinematics based on the uh, HIV results, also topographic features, and other previous research achievements uh, for my project. Uh, here, the geometry of Sentinel-1 satellite uh, are shown for both ascending and descending orbits. It is called ascending when the satellite is moving from the south, south to the north of the Earth. Uh, with right radar facing to the east, and it is called descending for moving from north to south, while it is looking westward in my case. And uh, there are some important angles reported by TRE, which will be used in my calculations later. The data features uh, are shown here in this slide uh, for both uh, orbits. Data is existed between November 2014 to early spring 2018 with some data gaps. The geometry of each orbit uh, is also shown here in this slide. Okay, and at, at the very first steps, I track the data and uh, search for any possible gaps. And I have selected the best time span to evaluate landslides kinematic uh, with proper lens and minimum data cap. Uh, the time span between May 2015 to May uh, 2017 was selected for this uh, purpose. The data density and LOS changes are shown in this slide for ascending orbits. It is shown here the ground is almost dormant uh, for landslide along the valley, except for the Ripley. Uh, you can see it here. Yeah. Or, or uh, sorry, Ripley, Red Hill, South Extension, South Stowe, Barnard, and some parts of Godard landslide, which it is zoomed in in the uh, right hand map. And you also can see the same map for uh, descending uh, orbit in this slide. And we have the same. Uh, area of activity along the valley. The next challenge in my research was selecting the area, including enough data for both orbits. It is uh, uh, presented here in this slide that it was a little challenging for the Ripley landslide due to its uh, size and the low data density in this area, but it was so much easier to find the uh, proper area for other landslides. In this slide, the data density are illustrated for some landslide as examples along the valley. Each sector contains enough ascending and descending data as it is shown here for most of the sectors. I use average LOS displacement for each sector in my calculations. Okay, as we discussed before, INSAR technique can detect displacement on the line of satellite side, but each LOS changes corresponds to projection of real movement on the LOS direction. So if we name unit vector of each LOS as S, the geometry and angles of the LOS can define this unit vector. 
and the changes of LOS for two different times show the magnitude of the projected true displacement on each LOS direction. And the true displacement vector is shown here by Bohr capital R. If we name the LOS vector as P, then equation four, four here shows that the changes of each LOS is equal to dot product of R vector and S vector. So we have two orbits here, which produce uh, equations five and six. And uh, now to find the solution for the system of equations to solve the problem, another equation is needed. I assumed in this uh, research that the horizontal movement of each sector is parallel to average slope aspect of the sector that uh, is shown here by alpha. And it is a common reasonable assumption in these kinds of calculations. Uh, now here are three equations and three unknowns, which make us able to find a solution for our problem to find a, a real uh, movement for each lens. The results are presented in the next couple of slides for different landslides. The horizontal component of calculated real movement are shown by R vector for each selected sector for the Ripley landslide in this current slide. Uh, and uh, recorded GPS data are also presented to compare and evaluate the accuracy of my developed method. As you see here, the maximum movement is near the toe of the Ripley landslide uh, for sector five. It's here, yeah, which is 81 millimeter per year for this sector. And the other part's back scarp is almost dormant with one to three millimeter per year velocity. It is also illustrated here that the result for my method agreed the GPS results both in direction and magnitude except for GPS-3, which it was mentioned in previous research that uh, it is a little too exaggerated uh, due to its location. Uh, they, they installed this GPS on, the, on a retaining wall, and it is a little too exaggerated. The vertical component of R vector for each sector are presented here for some selected sections for rip landslide, as it is shown here. Uh, sectors closer to the river on the toe of the Ripley landslide tend to move more horizontally than sectors closer to landslide scarp. The movement recorded by GPS-2 also agrees the result of vertical components of calculated R vector for sector 5, uh, which make us more confident about the result. The shown magnitudes here are the total calculated R ve uh, vectors, not only the vertical component. The recorded GPS data also is in consensus with a vertical component of R vector here for sector four, but it is a little more horizontal for sector four due to its location closer to the river and the results confirm existence of a sub horizontal clay layer, which was introduced as the responsible failure factor previously by other uh, researchers in this area. Uh, as it is appeared in the left plan view of Godard landslide, all sectors are almost dormant, and the maximum movement is for sector seven on the north side of the landslide, which is much faster than other sectors with 29 millimeter per year. The other parts uh, show movement less than 10 millimeter per year, which is the sign of an inactive landslide in this area. The vertical components are presented in the right section views in this slide for Godard lens. For North Land slide, the plan view is shown in the left map. The horizontal component of R vectors for this landslide are presented here. The most, the most active sectors for this landslide are located on the toe of the landslide with the maximum velocity of uh, 35 millimeter per year, while most sectors move less than five millimeter per year between May 2015 to May 2017. The section views on the right hand side suggests rotational landslide on this on the toe, which can be uh, be can be retrogressive to other parts of landslide in uh, when when it occurs. 
The maximum horizontal displacement for south landslide is 25 mm per year at the south part of the landslide, while other, other northern parts move less than 10 mm per year. At the section view on the south part of this landslide, we can see tendency of horizontal movement on the toe of the landslide closer to the river, which can be a sign of uh, existence of big clay layer in this area too. Uh, the ground is moving more inclined near the, the scarp. The next landslide in this area is south extension, which is extended from the south side of previous landslide, as it is appeared in the left plan view. This landslide is more active with maximum velocity of 64 millimeter per year in sector four, while all other sectors was moving more than 10 millimeter per year, except sectors nine and six. The vertical components also in the right figure shows shows the sign of existence of horizontal weak layer in this area and uh, the direction of south part and the, the northern part of this landslide are different due to uh, differences in uh, a slow aspect in this area. And despite Barnard landslides uh, distance from the railways, it can still affect their operation in case of activation. So I have checked its movement because we can see some movement in LOS changes map. The horizontal component of movement for this landslide is presented in the plan view and the maximum velocity is 18 millimeter per year for sector two at the center of the landslide, as you can see here. And the vertical components of our vector suggest uh, shallow rotational landslides in this area. And it can be explained because of its uh, lower slope in, for this landslide. For the Red Hill landslide, which is one of the fastest one in our list of landslides, its plan view shows more displacement on its toe at the southern part of this, part of this landslide. Uh, the maximum horizontal velocity in this case is 52 millimeter per year for sector eight and nine, while the minimum movement is less than 10 millimeter per year for sectors near the scarp. The vertical component of R vectors in this landslide suggests rotational retrogressive failure in case of activation for this landslide. It is a deeper one than uh, the previous uh, landslide. Okay, based on Cardin and Warner's classification for landslide movement, the result for all investigated landslides show a slow to very slow uh, movement for all these landslides along the Thompson River Valley. The results also confirm the previous investigations, results, and reports by other researchers. The results recommend retrograde rotational kinematic for the Godard landslide. Rotational movement is suggested by the result for the toe of the north landslide while it is so slow at the other sectors of this landslide. For the south landslide, the transitional movement is suggested for the south side of this landslide while the other sectors are dormant. For the south extension, we can detect transitional kinematic on its toe and somehow retrograde rotational movement for the other parts near the scarp. Barnard landslides show a shallow rotational retrogressive movement according to the result, and the Red Hill landslide shows a more obvious deeper retrogressive rotational movement, but it is still slow. The result for Ripley landslide, which is the fastest one in uh, the area of my research, show compound kinematic for this landslide. It is moving more transitional at its toe. Uh, while, uh, while it is moving uh, more vertical near SCA. Finding the true vectors are new in my research because there is no method to find the true displacement vectors. I use here a combination of uh, geometry and morphological assumptions to find what would be expected for this landslide. 
uh, it would be important to activity. Uh, it, it would be important to help for understanding landslide activity and kinematic to have better prediction of potential landslide to mitigate the risk. This method can be employed for other landslide movement detection all around the world if the data is existed in this area. The assumption for horizontal movement needs to be evaluated for other landslides type in other locations. Also, surface topog topographic characteristics could mislead the horizontal orientation of movement for complex mechanism or when basal sliding surfaces have uh, different deep directions than the overall surface slopes. The accuracy of this method should be evaluated in these cases, absolutely, but it still can give a good estimation for landslides activities. We cannot be so sure about the existence of any possible retrogression of this landslide back scarf when the detected displacement are too small in this area. It could be due to limitation of the method. So it is recommended to use other complementing techniques such as LIDAR and other change detection methods. Also, maybe in place instrumentation of slope from the known. known active uh, area of each landslide to identify any ongoing landslide retrogression. Okay, and finally, thank you all for attending and I hope I can explain any concern or question uh, about my project. Thanks. So thanks to Mr. Amit for the lecture about like the slides, uh, kinematics and monitoring. Now we have the time for the Q&A uh, session. So for this session, we are invite everyone uh, here and the people in, in Zoom uh, just to write their hand so we can bring the, the mic and everyone can hear the question. Um, that's all. So everyone here, or we can begin with the one in Zoom. Oh, okay. So, give me a moment. So. Um, thank you, everyone, for a very interesting presentation. I have two questions for you. Okay. My first question is well, my understanding was when you wanted to compose the micro site velocities, um, you basically broke down the Circle and the area of each landslide in different domes. Um, how did you come up with that way of showing it in the landslide? Okay. And also, my second question is that um, to, assume, to, to consider the aspect of each landslide, did you use any um, digital integration among the media or just sort of personal? Okay. I, I will answer the, the, the second question first because yeah, it has a short answer. Yeah, we, uh, we used DM uh, maps for the area of research and used ArcMap Arc software to find the aspect of each sector. Uh, and for the first question, uh, we should find some sectors uh, which contain uh, enough data from ascending, both ascending orbits and descending orbits and it was uh, the, the, the most important factor for us, but uh, we have had to still uh, find some places that represent, uh, I mean, in any landslide, we have a different movement for each part, you know, and we, we cannot use just one uh, vector to show all area, so we divided the landslide area to some uh, different sectors to, to, to see the, the movement in more detail for landslide. And uh, the, the, there was a caution. You, you can't use the very small uh, areas because maybe the aspect can mislead the result for those area. It was all about our, our consideration in that regard. Have some questions from the Zoom audience. Mm -hmm. um, first one is from Scott. Um, to what extent is things are limited by the slope aspect? Um, since the relay signal is in the east-west direction, 
My understanding is that as the scope as that becomes uh, predominantly more south direction, it is increasingly difficult to detect movement using the sound. And all the movement measurements become less accurate. That is, um, the master depends on having a complement uh, of the movement towards or away from the uh, satellite. So the component of movement that is perpendicular to the path of the radar signal cannot be detected. Oh, it's it's totally right. Yeah, because when we have a movement uh, perpendicular uh, to the line of sight, uh, it it couldn't be detected by INSAR, and it's the limitation of method. It, it is totally right, and yeah, it's just a limitation for INSAR method. Another question here. Um, so you, you kind of touched on it. Um, at what point is it preferential to do INSAR than say LIDAR? Like you kind of touched on a little bit of a advantages disadvantages comparison, but. At what point is it like for practical purposes, say cost, would you go from INSAR to say LIDAR? Okay, maybe the INSAR is applicable for some remote areas, which uh, it is uh, impossible to, to use LIDAR in that areas, and uh, it, it could be easily used for that those areas. I think it could be more uh, cheaper than LIDAR technique. So it could be the only reason I think. Uh, we have a question from Chris. Will the INSA detected movements of the Rigelon slide compared to the GPS data available for the that lens slide? I can get that that exact same, exact question. Where are the insert detected movements of the read lens that compared to the? You mean uh, how they were? How can we compare the date the, the results? Or I can't get that question, unfortunately. lens that compared to the GPS data. Yeah, it was on Ripley landslide, and we had the GPS data uh, in different time span. I think it was between uh, 2012 to 2016, if I, I, I'm not wrong. And yeah, we just uh, used those data to compare uh, the INSAR data, uh, data and the GPS data. I, I, I hope I, I could uh, answer the question. Okay, so uh, we have a follow up question um, from Chris. Uh, would the movement of the uh, Goddard slide be uh, underestimated since the four line direction of the God? Goddard lens slide is more north south than the other lens slide. Mm. Yeah, it could be, but I, I, I unfortunately couldn't find any other researches in this area. And uh, when I compared this, my, my result with the existed uh, results from another uh, the other research, it was in agreement. So, yeah, but but I think it could be because we don't have any movement on Goddard. So yeah, it's a good question and it, 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 it's, it's a good point. So thanks to Mr. Amit for his kind presentation and answers. And thanks to everyone in person and virtual.
Ali for attending this seminar. We expect to having you next week with another amazing presentation. So thank you and have a nice day. Thank you.